and welcome to the Telehealth and Remote Monitoring Technologies Showcase here at the Rayburn Building in Washington, D.C. We're joined by Neil Newberger. He's the Executive Director of the HIMSS Institute of eHealth Policy. And Neil, welcome. Thank you. Oh, thanks for joining us. It's a great event uh, here at the Rayburn Building, as I mentioned. I want to talk about uh, a little bit about uh, the history of telehealth, te telemedicine, e-health, all of that under the umbrella of the health sector. Take us back even all the way back to the 1990s. Okay, I can take you back further than that because telehealth really started in the 60s and 70s through some projects of NASA Division of Life Sciences and Microgravity Applications, which was doing terrestrial-based medicine as a ex experiments really for their uh, orbiting space flights and things into, among other things, the Papago Indian Reservation in southwest U.S. and uh, some, some early pioneers included the Mayo Clinic and in Boston, Boston Children's, who did a major telehealth project out to Logan Airport and some other things. So the technologies really started 40 or more years ago and then I think really got going uh, in the 80s and 90s when we were focused on room-based and rollabout two-way interactive video teleconferencing and experimenting with both store and forward and real-time technologies to do clinical consults from primarily tertiary care facilities in large urban areas or academic health centers out into rural areas of the United States. And so telehealth has traditionally been viewed as a way for rural and sometimes underserved inner city folks to gain access to the healthcare system, whereas they might not have had it before. Now it's, it's mor morphed into very much more than that. And it's become hundreds, if not thousands, of technologies and applications and content areas in just about every area of clinical service direct de delivery and teaching and training and population health management and so much more. Neil, as you know, uh, technology always outpaces, uh, I would say always, but oftentimes outpaces Congress. Congress has a hard time keeping up with the new innovations that are coming out almost every day now. What's slowing down the telehealth space at this time? Well, exactly, and so the advances in telehealth have been iterative on the major issues, and the number one, two, and three top issue has been reimbursement, reimbursement, and reimbursement. And followed closely by capital investment, infrastructure and broadband build out, licensure across state lines given the state-based licensure system that we have both for physicians and nurses in this country. And so Congress had 15 years ago in various bills and under the various jurisdiction of different committees taken on some of these issues. So in the Telcom Act of 1996, there were provisions for a Universal Service Access Corporation and program for telehealth out into remote areas to help with some of the broadband build out for especially remote and rural areas to help with the service lines that were in place, mostly T1 and above lines at the time, long before wireless became ubiquitous. And, and they began to whittle away at some of the reimbursement re restrictions through the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services. But again, very slowly, there's always been a fear within Congress and in various administrations that healthcare technologies are going to cost more than they save in the long term. And good, bad, or otherwise, and for whatever reasons, we tend to get tarred with that same broad brush. And so, while there have been excesses in durable medical equipment of various kinds uh, over the years, we've had to distinguish ourselves and show that there are significant downstream savings and efficiencies to be had, especially in an evolving healthcare environment that's focused more on value and less on volume, and keeping people out of hospitals and long-term care facilities. And that message hasn't gotten through to some of the budget offices and OMB and CBO in terms of scoring. So while the front end investments get scored as costers to the federal government and to the budget, the downstream savings have never been scored. And that's a big issue. Because at the end of the day, we've never met a member of Congress, either side of the aisle or in either house, that didn't think it was a good idea to e-enable the healthcare environment for telehealth, remote monitoring, 
electronic medical records, personal health records, all of it. They all like this stuff. It, it, it all comes down to the, the resources and how to get this done in a fiscally austere environment. Now I want to ask you about um, the progress of broadband build out and the relationship to that and remote monitoring, which is part of the, uh, the showcase here today. Uh, where, where are the challenges there and where are we on that issue right now? Okay, so there, broadband has grown up in leaps and bounds through uh, many of the companies that are members of TIA and of HIMSS through the big carriers, Verizon, AT&T, Sprint, and the rest. Um, that said, it's still not necessarily ubiquitously found in some of the most remote and frontier areas and in inner city areas. But at the same time, wireless technologies have taken off since much of the initial legislation was passed. And so what we find is that there are many more wireless nodes that are capable of doing an awful lot that we couldn't have even conceived of 20 years ago, even short of having you know, uh, broadband capabilities, wired, wireline broadband capabilities. So that's another area that's going to have to be legislated uh, in favor of and regulated to some degree is wireless technologies. And the Federal Communications Commission and the Food and Drug Administration, all of whom have interests in these areas, have yet to figure out exactly how it is they're going to either regulate or hopefully take a soft hands approach to to, to, to how they uh, approve those kinds of mechanisms and processes for, for medical care. They have understandable concerns on the quality side, for example, and have to ensure that technologies don't do more harm than good, and that's always a possibility when you start to combine uh, e-technologies with actual healthcare delivery technologies, durable medical equipment and things, and we're starting to see that kind of synergy also. So they're very much more concerned about some of those high-end technologies that have direct clinical applications than they are, for example, around personal status monitors, you know, like Jawbone and Fitbit, and that kind of thing that intrepid runners and swimmers and everybody use to you know, monitor their heart rate and their sleep patterns and that kind of thing. There's, so it's a whole spectrum of technologies that we have to be thinking about in terms of both the communication side, the privacy and security side, and the quality outcomes side. Neil, of course, uh, the HIMS annual event is starting in just a couple of months, I believe on April 14th. Um, tell me about that event and how that's evolved um, over the last couple of years. So HIMS is a cause-based organization that is both representative of many of the vendors in this whole space, something like 650 different companies, and more than 30,000 personal members, and has grown into much more than just a trade show. So for example, we have a growing government affairs office here in Arlington, Virginia, and offices in several different states and in countries around the world. That said, we are the largest uh, organization focused really on the e-enabling of the healthcare environment in the world. And in Chicago, at whatever number annual conference that is, we'll have you know 38,000 of your closest friends um, all convened in McCormick Place, the, almost the entirety of McCormick Place, and hundreds, football fields of exhibits around the electronic medical record, the personal health care record, interoperability of those records, which is becoming a bigger and bigger issue, the integration of telehealth and remote monitoring technologies into the electronic medical record, which is also a big issue, what to do about big data issues, who owns it, who uses it, who controls it, how do we secure it in the healthcare environment, and a lot of other both technology and policy related issues. The Institute for eHealth Policy within the HIMSS Foundation has continuing a now 22 year long Capitol Hill briefing series that began in 1993 under the aegis of eight to 10 members of Congress, Senators Ted Stevens from Alaska, Larry LaRocca, uh, Con uh, Senator Al, Al Simpson from Wyoming, Jay Rockefeller from West Virginia, to look at, at the time, really just emerging telehealth issues, and has grown since then uh, to include all of the e-health-like issues. And so, to date, we've done something like 200-plus lunch briefing uh, sessions and technology demonstrations 
on both sides of the aisle and in both houses and uh, under the aegis of always about 10 to 12 members of Congress who otherwise wouldn't necessarily agree about just anything else. But this is such a bipartisan issue, as you'll see later today when some members show up, that it's not hard to get members of Congress to help to the extent that they could. And we really appreciate working with TIA uh, on this particular technology event. We appreciate that it's a non-healthcare focused group that has taken such a great interest in these issues to do something like this and more. We appreciate the leadership. Thanks, Neil. Thank you. Thank you.